Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to explore the fundamental theorem for line integrals. So what is that? Well, if we go back a few chapters in our calculus book, we'll find something that looks like this. Here we can say that the integral evaluated from a to b of the differential of some function times dx, and assuming the function here, we're going to keep it simple, is only a function of the variable x, so we have the differential dx. This can be defined as the function evaluated at b minus the function evaluated at a. So replace every x by b and every x by a, and the difference of those is equal to the integral from a to b of the derivative or the differential of that function. And so for line integrals, we have a similar theorem, and that theorem is called the fundamental theorem for line integrals. Here we can say that the integral, the line integral of the gradient of a function f dotted with the derivative or the differential of the position vector can be written as the function evaluated at b minus the function evaluated at a. Again, the line integral is going to be from b to a, or I should say from a to b. And so we then evaluate the function at b, and then again at a, and of course the position vector at b and the position vector at a, and the difference of that is equal to this integral. So remember what the gradient was? Well, the gradient was the partial with respect to x, y, and z of the function times, of course, the unit vectors in the three directions. So the gradient of a scalar function becomes a vector function. So this is now defined as a vector function. The gradient of, of a scalar function, where the scalar function is a function of x, y, and z, can now be written as this. Also, we have the position vector, which is defined as x times i plus y times j plus z times k. And eventually, we're going to write the position vectors vector in terms of the what we call the parametric equations the, of the common variable t. And we're going to do that for both f and r in the future here. So notice that we can eventually then can write this integral as the gradient of f dotted with the derivative or the differential of the position vector in terms of t times dt. So eventually we're going to be able to write it like that. Now, we already know that the gradient of the scalar function is going to look like this, which is now a vector, because the gradient of a scalar becomes a vector, and we're going to do the dot product with the differential of the position vector. So if r is defined as this, the position vector will then be the derivative of x with respect to t in the i direction, the derivative of y with respect to t in the j direction, plus the derivative of z with respect to t in the k direction, the whole thing times dt. Remember that t is the, the common or the parametric variable if we express x, y, and z in terms of t and the position vector in terms of, of t as well. And then notice when we multiply these two together, then, of course, the i's, the j's, and the k's disappear because with a dot product, the result of a dot product is a scalar quantity, so we end up with a scalar quantity times dt. Notice it will be the partial of f with respect to x times dx dt, the partial of f with respect to y times dy dt from here, and the partial of f with respect to z times dz dt, and the whole thing times dt. Now, what we don't want to do yet is cancel out the dt's here with that dt there because that would kind of uh, defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do. What we are going to do is realize that since we're going to write this in, in terms of the parametric variable eventually, we see a dx and a, and a differential with respect to x, but these will cancel out and we end up with a partial of f with respect to t. But since we now have a single common variable, we no longer need to write it as a partial, so we can actually write the remainder as the derivative of f with respect to t, and that's what we've done here. But then we've, we do that for each of the three terms, and then we factor out a 1 over dt. So now we have a ddt, because all of them will become a ddt of f, a ddt of f, and a dt of f. So we can factor out a ddt of the function f, and instead of now writing in terms of x, y, and z, we're going to write in terms of the parametric variable t pointed to with our position vector. And so we have a dt still over here. Every one of these terms, the, <coughs> the dx and delta x, the dy delta y and dz delta z cancel out. We now have a partial of the function with respect to dt. We can see that we can factor that out. And now we have a ddt of the function 
with respect to the variable t dt. And if we integrate that, that becomes the function because the derivative, the integral of a derivative, cancel out. We end up with a function evaluated b minus the function evaluated a. And that is the result of the fundamental theorem for line integrals. Now, that makes it easy if we take a function, we take the gradient of that, and then we dot it with the position vector or the differential position vector that can simply then be evaluated as the function at the final point B minus the function at the initial point A, where B and A, of course, are the ends of the line over which we're going to integrate. Now, this one, coupled with several other theorems that we're going to look at in the next several videos, we're going to get a much better understanding of what line integrals are, and we're going to understand the fundamental properties of line integrals and knowing when the, the vector fields are conservative and non-conservative. And we're also going to be able to determine whether or not line integrals are path-dependent or path-independent. So again, to get a better understanding, we're going to take a closer look and examples of the fundamental theorem of for line integrals and a few other theorems for line integrals and that way we have a firm grasp of what line integrals are and that's how it's done.